Warning, the following Otaku Generation podcast has content of an adult and mature nature and is not necessarily safe for work or appropriate for children under the age of 18. If you are easily offended by content of this type, please stop this recording. Parental discretion is advised. The opinions and viewpoints expressed on Otaku Generation are those of the cast and crew and the individuals that express them and are not necessarily associated with the sponsors or guests of the show. Otaku Generation is a Red Apple production which is solely responsible for its content. All impressions are poorly impersonated. And please, for the love of God, don't try this at home. Hi, I'm Frank Edward Nora from The Overnightscape, and you're listening to the one and only Otaku Generation. What's Reesh? What's Bank? Well, you know who to thank. It's Ellen and the boys. So let's all make some noise. Welcome to the show 820. I am Alan. I am Matt. And I'm Bryce. What's Breach? What's Bang? What's Squeak with the OG crew? So, I was having a little bit of uh, computer trouble with the new system. You know, it dawned on me that I never hooked up any kind of like Wi-Fi antennas or anything on it. And so, I was having this weird trouble with Bluetooth. And then I went digging into the, the bag of stuff I got with the, you know, the system. And there was this shark fin of spe- of <laughs> of some sort uh, that was clearly the antenna so i connected that thing up now my bluetooth problem is is good i was watching the <laughs> muppets on <laughs> disney plus it's interesting to see how dated it is it comes from a, a point in time it's just interesting what that like first and second episode is like compared to what i remember it as a kid i just decided that uh friday night was the time to watch the muppets and so i did and uh, mm-hmm. apparently everything is there minus like two episodes. Bryce and I recorded an ATS. There was new Con Luke came out. I released the ATS. So both things are available on Sunday. Bryce, I started to run They Are Billions. I was playing that oh. a little bit today. Mm-hmm. So it looks oh, yeah. like it's a pretty good game despite it being sort of zombies or whatever it is. So mm-hmm. uh, they don't lean heavily on that. Uh, I, I obviously failed the first first attempt. Um, I clearly don't know what's going on yet enough. So uh, it's going to take some time for me to figure that out. But I'll I'll, I'll make some effort to play it. Uh, This is one of the things that Paul had gifted me. So, Mm, yeah. Yeah. It looks cool. I have not played too much of it myself yet. Yeah. Uh, So, Matt. What, uh, what's been going on with you? Um, mostly been playing uh, board games online. Steam has an adaptation of Terraforming Mars, um, which is a lot of fun to play. Um, it recently got upgraded, so it includes the uh, the Preludes expansion, if you're willing to buy the DLC. And I, I know I've mentioned this, this game before in the past, um, but it's been bug-fixed and upgraded, and they just got the Preludes expansion added to it, and it seems like it even runs faster now. Big vote of support for Terraforming Mars. Woohoo. Uh, yeah, I guess uh, I need to do the upgrade. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Um, and the other thing I heard is that um, Asmodee, the the company that that like puts out Terraforming Mars, has has like bought Board Game Arena online. Oh, really? Has anyone heard about mm. this? No. Yeah. You were looking for more information. I didn't know anything about that. At yeah. All. yeah. You're more dialed into that than I am. I'm sure. So. Yeah. Uh, I would think this is probably a good thing. I hope it's a good thing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Asmodee Group acquires Board Game Arena. Okay. Yeah. So I, I guess, guess it is. Yeah, sure. I guess guess we'll find out. <laughs> See, this is the this is the thing I I don't understand is Asmodee puts out games, right? But not every game is by Asmodee, whereas Board Game Arena seems to be pretty broadly based, and I'm not really sure why they would want to buy a gaming service that has competitors' games on it, unless it's to like you know shut it down and kill all the competitors' games. Well, if you are a business that has some money and you are as enthusiastic um, about, like, you know, a platform like Board Games Arena. Now, what I don't know is the details is how basically BGA does licensing. 
So that would be interesting. I hope they are doing licensing. Well, uh, yeah, there's a press release here which says that Board Game Arena will remain completely independent. Encouragement, current management will remain at its helm. Pricing policies and editorial line remain unchanged. Hmm. Okay. Uh, so that's that's good. Well, and you know the other thing is maybe maybe the group of developers or that that sort of gaming company thinks that they can add value. I would assume so. I mean, you know, you don't you know, it's not like BGA was like public. I'm yeah. sure there's some mutual conversation that's going on there. It's probably for a good reason, right? I'm not well, sure I, that they were well, desperate. I board game arena, it was it was basically operated on a, a kind of an informal basis. It wasn't a big legalistic thing. It was just like we do ba we do board games online. It's a nice service because I mean I've I've just been able to try out so many games that otherwise I wouldn't have dropped like 40 or 50 bucks to buy just to see if they sucked or not. Once we get back to, you know, board gaming in person, there's mm -hmm. probably a lot of these games that I'm going to try and pick up, honestly. Yeah. Because uh, they're good games. <laughs> That's my big news uh, for this week. So, Bryce, what about you? Not really a lot, to be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, at all. Um... The only thing I, anime related I watched was uh, the second episode of the World Egg Priority, which is that remember this weird one we just did in the previews? It was um, they, they make, the girl gets these eggs and she's in the school and these monsters are chasing them down and it was a really strange uh, show. Does that ring a bell to either of you? Uh, the name <laughs> rings a bell, but the rest <laughs> of it does not. Okay, well I watched episode two. I think it's actually pretty good. Um, has a great style uh, to it. Maybe a little too much at times with some of the creature designs. Hmm. I wish Paul was here because I would like to recommend it to him. So maybe next week I'll let him know or let him know on right. Slack. But yeah, he would might, he'd be interested in it, I think. Um, sure. This week we are talking about Talentless Nana or Muno no Nana, which is an anime, 13 episodes, based on the manga by Loose Boy. And ironically, not written, not illustrated by Loose Boy, but illustrated by Iori Furuya. Um, this is a seven-volume manga ongoing, um, which, interestingly, is available on Crunchyroll. Uh, and the TV series is available on Funimation. Okay. Uh, what to talk about this? This is kind of like talking about Puella Madoka Magica, because so much of the of the story is, is the plot line. Um, there's a lot of revelations and mysteries and sneaking around. But I, I suppose the, the best way to describe this is um, it's kind of like um, Boku no Hero Academia, where you've got this high school for, for like super powered people, um, except that it's kind of a battle royale setup where the the powers that be are not really big fans of the super powered youth so they they sort of put them all into a deserted island elite academy and then let them kill each other and that that's basically the premise of the show now, this is my recommendation so i take all the credit <laughs> <laughs> um how much how much do we want to talk about this for from a spoiler point of view i mean i mean i'm I mean, assuming that that like the big twist in episode one is something you can't really yeah avoid spoiling yeah i think that's fair okay um so this this is a sneaky show um when you when you show up there's um this this like quiet bullied kid in in the class named nanao who doesn't seem to have a superpower, and it looks like he's the protagonist of this show. Um, you know, he shows up, the cliche of not one but two transfer students show up, and of course the cute girl gets stuck in the seat next to him, and oh no, it seems that she's a telepath and a mind reader, so of course he's incredibly embarrassed to like have you know the cute new girl sitting next to him, and you know she's just really nice. She's she's Genki, she's friendly, 
Her goal is to make a hundred friends on her first day of school. Mm-hmm. She has pink hair. I mean, she's she's just like the nicest girl ever. And she sort of becomes his friend and they begin talking and um, she discovers that he really does have a superpower, but it's not really a flashy superpower. Um, and things are just going on really, really nicely until she kicks him off a cliff. And then you find out the and true you find enemies out humanity. <laughs> the real premise of the show is it's not about, it's not a ripoff of, of My Hero Academia. It's basically, this girl is an assassin. Mm-hmm. She's been sent to infiltrate the school and get rid of all of the dangerous superheroes. Mm-hmm. And and he's a human day, as they're called. <laughs> yes. And, and the more it goes on, the more you understand that this is not a legitimate superhero school. This is kind of like that high school that Ava pilot candidates go to in Evangelion. <laughs> yeah. Just so that, like, the big conspiracy has them all in one spot so they know how to get to them quickly. And basically, these kids are all here on this Island Elite Academy in the hopes that order will devolve, they'll break up into factions and kill each other with their superpowers, or if they don't, they'll be, like, meat on the table for undercover assassins to sneak in and kill them all off. And... So, yeah, it's <laughs> definitely a more mystery-based uh, show. Um, you know, the yeah. big, I guess the big, like, dynamic, at least in the first half of the series, is certainly the um, Nana, uh, talentless Nana, as she's called, <laughs> uh, her sort of cat-and-mouse game with, um, what's the name of the silver-haired kid with, who's, like, um, Kiyoya? I think his name is. Yeah. Yeah. And and it sort of the other transfer student. This this death store this uh ah, death note kind of dynamic where Nana's mission is to kill off all of the quote unquote talented students before they can turn their superpowers on humanity. And um to be fair, the backstory of this series is that these talented people basically started throwing their weight around and just massacring people and figuring out pretty quickly that, you know what? Having superpowers means not having to obey these things called laws. Um, So basically they, they just started committing horrible crimes and atrocities. And eventually there was a huge civil war (laughs) where you had the criminal talented versus the lawful talented, and then after the lawful talented one, they sort of were like, well, you know, now that we've killed off all the criminals, why do we have to obey laws, come to think of it? Uh, So then there was another huge war, and eventually the normal people won, but ever since then they've had this sort of containment strategy for what to do about, you know, super-powered people. And their whole strategy seems to be contain and eliminate. <laughs> yeah, I thought the premise was a little shaky. <laughs> um, just why they would not just... They kind of sort of explain it again, like why wouldn't they just gather these students up and bomb the island? <laughs> but uh, why yeah. some... <laughs> and, so... Mm-hmm. Um, so... I'm I'm kind of I'm kind of fuzzy about their whole definite their whole sort of um, fatalistic view that anybody with superpowers is just inevitably going to turn their use against the common good, um, but I mean I guess for the premise of the show you've got to have that that dramatic tension to justify sending. Yeah. And an assassin to kill them all. Um, and this this seems to be kind of a, a common thing that I've noticed in in anime is is you have a premise where you've got a bunch of people isolated in a particular area, and then you either give them some incentive to kill each other off, or one of them is 
is basically a mole and a ringer who's there to kill them all off. Um, what what was that show with the the like creepy teddy bear that was like half black oh. and half white? Yeah, Duncan Rumba. Yeah, Duncan yeah. Rumba. It's called. <laughs> And then you've got assassination classroom where the whole point is to try and assassinate the invincible teacher. Uh, so the school of death is is a kind of a a common recurring trope in uh, in manga and anime. Um, did you like that, the uh, the back and forth? Uh, did you did you enjoy the investigations and them trying the two main characters sort of trying to out detective each other? <laughs> Um, yeah, and, and that's the cool thing about this, is that, on the one hand, you've got Nana, who is, you know, pretending to be nice and friendly, and simultaneously kill every single person that she runs into, and then on the other hand, you've got the other transfer student, who is suspicious of her, and is kind of paranoid, where he doesn't know that Nana is killing people, but he's paranoid and suspicious enough to hypothesize that, well, all of these people could just be dying for the reasons that seem obvious, <laughs> or it could be that Nana, the class representative and everybody's friend, is murdering them all very sneakily. <laughs> I wonder which it is. <laughs> Yeah, I think the uh, that character, um, the other transfer student, he he does sort of bring like speak up like why this premise is so shaky. He's kind of like, well, I don't understand. We got people people are missing. Why can't we bring in someone to help us? And it's like, well, it's no outside contact allowed. Blah, blah. He's like, but there's no we're at this school and nobody's really training us to do anything to be weapons against these enemies of humanity. So why are we here? And it's like, yeah, it's a good question. Maybe don't bring that up. You don't have a good answer. And they didn't really have a good answer. So. Yeah, and and that's the thing that that really um, starts you know leaping out at you is like, okay, well you'd expect this school for like super powered teenagers to be more like an X Men academy where like everybody's um, abilities are being quantified and they're being taught how to like combat. Um, yeah, like my hero, basically. these mythical enemies of humanity, they're being trained to coordinate their attacks, to understand each other's weaknesses and compensate for them, and, you know, learn tactics and team and squad dynamics and military um, protocol and that sort of thing. And what they're really doing is they're just sort of sitting there like Crow Modern High School um, <laughs> doing jack <laughs> yeah being like the omega class where it's like all the problem children have been dumped into this one class and the teacher is ineffectual and is just kind of trying to re retain a semblance of authority um and and like you know institute this facade of normalcy and you've got you know all of these kids just teleporting into class and the fire guy and the ice guy are always you know like putting aggro on each other and bullying the kid who doesn't seem to have any flashy powers and yada, yada, yada. It's, it's kind of a, a sham school when you, when anybody really, really thinks about it. Right. Uh, becomes more and more apparent as you go on because it's like, well, so-and-so is missing. Okay. Should we be alarmed by this? Nah, you'll, you'll probably turn up, I guess. Well, Shouldn't we call the police? And it's like, well, it's a talent. It's an island full of super powered teenagers. The police, you know, not really too keen to get messed up with that. <laughs> and it's like, seriously, that's that's the faculty's opinion. It's like, yeah, we should probably ask somebody about like all these disappearances and dead students. And it's like, holy crap, they were more pro proactive about student safety at Hogwarts, for God's sakes. I think there have been much better examples or similar examples that have done um, an execution of this kind of show better. Bryce, I mean, you're the one who, who sort of wanted us to watch this. So I'm sure there's there's something about it that, that you were interested in. Um, um, yeah, I read it at first. Um, I just read sort of up to, I guess, probably where um, 
like the necromancer episodes basically okay mm-hmm. uh, and then i then finish up the anime um i it doesn't really leave a um kind of leaves a big cliffhanger um because this is the first season i assume it get, if it gets second season it would continue on um um yeah i i'd liked it i think I would say though is the writing might think it's a little more clever than it actually is. Like the back and forth constantly with, you know, the theorizing hypotheses, like they kind of went on a little too long sometimes, or like, I feel like they could have maybe sped it up a bit, <laughs> but um, I thought the mysteries were fun. Like I thought like, you know, the way, that, you know, each character sort of solves their problems and sort of go like, Oh, that's very clever. You know, this is very, you know, sort of like the way you'll, you know, rig a window so that it opens the way you want it to and not the way they're going to actually use it, stuff like that to get out of a situation. Um, I like that stuff a lot. Um, yeah, and and that's the thing that I liked about this. It's the 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 scheming and plotting because you've got Nana, who's sort of this undercover agent and assassin, so she's here to accomplish this mission and rid the world of the dangerous superheroes. And on the other hand, you've got all these superheroic kids. Well, they're not all superheroic. They're all power kids. Some of them are jerks. Some of them are noble, but they're they're all you know enemies of humanity themselves. So on the one hand, you're kind of rooting for the underdog to accomplish her mission. But on the other hand, not all of these people are horrible jerks, so you don't want to see them all get killed. Um, and she starts to have those type of conflicts towards the end of the series as well. Yeah. Like. Um, but it actually kind of ties into um, something that I got from Adam Warren's Empowered, where, um, have you ever read this, Bryce? I have not. I've heard of it. Oh, okay. Um, well, it's, it's basically a world where you've just got you know, tons of superheroes running around like crazy. And Empowered's um, boyfriend um, is nicknamed Thug Boy mm-hmm. because he's, he's not superpowered and he is a former minion of supervillains. And then what you find out later on as you go along, that his crew of minions would basically get themselves hired by a supervillain and then rob them blind. (laughs) And then like eBay all of their crap to support themselves. (laughs) And then when you go back even further into his history, you discover that he was an anti-superhero vigilante when mm-hmm. he was younger. And the the cool thing about it is that just because somebody has a superpower does not mean they're unkillable. Everybody has a power, but your your power is just your power. It doesn't prevent you from suffocating or being squished unless that's your power is to not be squished. And mm-hmm. that no matter how nifty cool and powerful your superpower is you've got some kind of a weakness there's some kind of limit and cleverness will get you a lot further than just you know flaunting a superpower all the time um Mm -hmm. and and that's kind of the position that nana is in because she's like well how the hell do i kill somebody who's got you know um infallible foresight how do I stop somebody who can travel into the past to see what has happened? Although, to be fair, you've got the guy who travels into the past and the guy who can foresee the future. Doesn't it seem like these two superpowers would kind of like be mutually incompatible? I mean, oh, maybe. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> uh, I guess the, the guy who goes into the past, he changes the present. Yeah. Which I guess could then change the photos. Which would change the future, yeah. Um, so, again, don't think about it too deeply. Uh, <laughs> you've got people who have like allegedly got super strength. Then you've got this kid who can reanimate dead bodies. Um, and then you've got the guy who's basically invulnerable. And I'm, I'm guessing that as the series goes on, it's more and more a cat and mouse game where, where Nana is desperately trying to hide her guilt like a Hitchcock villain. Mm -hmm. And then you've got sort of the unkillable detective who is trying to understand her plot and expose her. And nobody wants to believe that the class rep is, is the one who's killing all these people. Mm -hmm. 
Um, I mean, they start actually bringing like more parties to the table, like with their own interests actually into the into the mess. So mm-hmm. that's more sort of the way it goes uh, for the second half of the series. Yeah, which I uh, liked. But but I like this show. I I was actually kind of interested. Like at the end of every episode, I was like, oh no, how's how's Nana going to get out of this one? Or is this the one where she gets exposed? Or mm-hmm. or does she like? decide that she doesn't want to kill all of the people or i'm i'm also just sort of sitting in sitting here in the back of my mind going you know the guy who shot kennedy did not live too much longer after the job was done (laughs) so i'm i'm just waiting for the evil conspiracy to decide that that nana has outlived her usefulness and they send someone like her to get rid of her Mm, i can see you going that direction for sure um, oh yeah it's it's just like classic bad guy um 101 is you mm-hmm. know once the assassin has has killed the target get rid of the assassin mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah well actually that's that's the clever thing because it's it's a fake out because at the beginning you think the the talentless nana is nano the mm-hmm. guy who who seems to have no overt ability and then you find out later that it's nana because she's just a normal person like her cover is that she's um, a mind reader and she can un- she can like get you know thoughts out of people's heads, but basically she just does it like a stage magician does. She does cold readings on people. She does the Sherlock Holmes bit, where she just observes people and is is incredibly perceptive and knowledgeable, and that allows her to fake being a mind reader. And it's really clever, too, because no one can take her superpower away. <laughs> I thought the other classmates, though, were a little too gullible at times. Like, it seemed like the only person that he even had an inkling that Nana might be doing something bad is the, you know, this other transfer student. And I just feel, I don't know. The other mm-hmm. ones were like, what do you mean? She, she wouldn't do that. And I guess there is no one really knows why. No one, ha- at the, no one in the class would know what her motive is because they have no idea about the conspiracy behind, you know, to get rid of them. <laughs> and, yeah, they, like they just think they go to Cromarty High. Um, yeah. And everyone buys um, Nana's act mm-hmm. um, because she just starts out being friendly and ganky and supportive and cute and moe. And oh my God, she has pink hair. She's just so moe. Um, and everybody buys it. That's the thing. And confirmation bias says once you know something, you just will not disbelieve it. Mm-hmm. If, if they had been told right out that she was an assassin, they would have mm-hmm. believed they never would have believed she wasn't. Mm-hmm. And because they were told the opposite right off the bat, they they're just like, OK, we filed her into this little slot and if anyone's an assassin, it's this creepy standoffish guy that we don't like who who just like is very socially awkward and doesn't fit in with everyone. Mm. And it's truly amazing how how human nature mm. can be exploited like this. It's just like, eh, who's the guilty person? Probably this guy that we didn't like to begin with. Mm-hmm. Sounds good. OK. So what else did we not talk about? Um, I thought the animation was decent. Um, yeah. A lot of inner dialogue monologuing. Uh, I didn't want to mention that. So be ready for that to be inside Nana's head quite a lot as she plots things out. Um, yeah, but I'm willing to give them a pass on that. Even though oh, I'm fine with it too. I'm just saying it's uh, like there's there's this thing in storytelling where they say show don't tell, particularly in the visual arts. But honestly, there is a certain practicality where it's where where it just is like. We need to establish a plot point, and it would be tremendously awkward and time-consuming to to display this in a visual manner. So it's it's honestly better for the storytelling flow to just okay. have a voiceover where where Nana is like, "Okay, he thought about this and he thought about that, but what he didn't know is that I thought about this in anticipation of that," or I just got lucky there. I am so lucky they did not like go right. messing around in the bushes in the forest. Mm-hmm. Um, 
because sometimes you just got to do that when you're scheming and plotting. You just got to <laughs> hope that the, the marks don't look to the left. Mm. Um. So, yeah, I thought it looked good. Um, loved, I, I like the opening. I really loved the ending, actually. That was a very good mm-hmm. sequence at the end. Um, you know, showing everybody you know, as a happy class and then being like, oh, no, you didn't get that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Good shot. It's... Yeah, it's it's kind of like the fake out from Madoka Magica, where it seems like, oh, this is going to be a, a cute, typical, happy, magical girls show where, you know, everybody has a pretty dress and a magic wand and you can jump really high in the air and people are getting their wishes fulfilled and you've got a cute little animal mascot. Isn't he just like the cutest little thing? And then you get into it and just like, no, no, it's horrible. And it's even more horrible than you think because everything you learn about it makes it more horrible. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it's pretty dark. I would say it's not over the top gory at all, though. It, it, you know, there's some dead bodies, but it's not like we're not talking, you know, well, there's some stabbing, I guess. <laughs> well, I mean, this is a show about like a schoolgirl who murders other yeah. people. But, but it's it, not like super but, graphic in a way. Yeah, but for all that being said, it's it's not really that awful. I mean, yeah, she kills people, and it's a it's she tries to kill people in a wide variety of ways because mm-hmm. you know you don't want to repeat yourself. That would get boring. Yeah, um, and suspicious. And suspicious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but the thing is, you you don't wallow in the in the in the actual like killing of people. The only time you ever see somebody like, you know, horribly injured and burned is when they're invulnerable. So they're going to heal up from it right away. Right. You know, it's, it's, it's kind of like, um, in Ranma one half where every time somebody has a horrible, horrible plot to like murder Ranma, the only reason that they're allowed to have a horrible plot to murder Ranma is because you know it's not going to succeed. <laughs> right. Like, we're going to squash Ranma flat with a boulder. It doesn't work. And then it's more like the Roadrunner and the Coyote. Mm-hmm. So, anything else we might have to say? Um, yeah, I mean, it looked fine to me. I like the opening and the closing music. I think it's just generally not my kind of show. Um, hmm. I think I was looking for a little bit more world building. Yeah, I guess they're gonna have to do that now. The way that the season, the series ended, like the story has to now start doing that. Mm-hmm. And I'm a little scared how they're gonna do that and how they're gonna actually wrap up a story like this. So I don't know. <laughs> but I guess it's not done yet. So right, plenty to. How does well, it compare to the manga? Because you said you were reading it. I actually like the anime more. Oh really? To be with you. I wasn't that impressed by the manga um, okay. at first. Um, I think they do they do the, the drama and the, and the mysterious reveals much better in the anime for this one, at least for me. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Um, I think there's a there's a kind of a an immediacy to um, a TV presentation or a movie presentation that you don't get um, from reading a mystery book or or even a manga. Um, the manga illustrates things more, but there's just something about seeing it play out in real time in front of you that, that gives it an immediacy and, and a realism that, that is kind of hard to shake off. Um, like a, a book is an intellectual experience. You know, it's, it's all, it's all about finding out the mystery and getting to the end of the Agatha Christie book and, and going, Oh, it was, you know, the lawyer's unseen nephew who killed people. And then you go, Oh, come on. You didn't even mention Herbert until like four pages ago. Oh, that's good, nonsense. Yeah. Whereas seeing it play out in front of you really, really gives you that that immersion that mm-hmm. of of the story being told that you, you don't otherwise get. Right. So I I think that might be, you know, the the best thing about this is that yeah, it's cool that there's a manga for it, but as as an anime, it may have its highest you know representation, I guess. And I'd be interested in finishing this season, and I'd like to see a second season of this. Yeah, me too. Um, I think a lot of people actually would like this show. Um, I think it's, I think it appeal to a lot of people who sort of like mystery, suspense, um, mm-hmm. thriller. Maybe is the <laughs> psychological thriller. <laughs> I think it's a pretty good one. 
Uh, if you are interested in knowing a little bit more about this show or even seeing it, uh, you can check it out at Funimation. Uh, I have three links, Funimation, the Wiki, and ANN. OGLink.com slash 5G2, 5G3, and 5G5. The manga's on Crunchyroll as well. Oh, okay. If you okay. want to read it, yes. if you're interested. Interesting. Um, I didn't have a link for that. <laughs> Sorry. That's fine. <laughs> The anime's better there. I said it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, there you go. Uh, based on uh, Bryce's recommendation. Okay. Um, if there isn't anything else for us to talk about, then um, we should probably close up the show. And I have a fortune. And oh, awesome. Uh, for all the things we've mentioned here, please visit our website, www.talkgeneration.net or ognetworks.tv. Um, if you like to email us and give us your opinion of this show, otaku.generation at gmail.com. Uh, or you can come in and hang out with us in Discord. If you want to leave feedback, you can do that, oglink.com slash feedback. Or you just want to come in and hang out in Discord, oglink.com slash Discord. Or if you want to become a patient supporter, you can do that as well oglink.com slash patreon all right i got a fortune matt's got a fortune the question is who whose fortune is better <laughs> or are, are we, as we say not a fortune if we don't have uh paul's quick quip uh to, to to get us through uh our not a fortunes this week okay so golden investment opportunities are arising that's a fortune yeah. that's a fortune Okay, well, <laughs> okay. Or I are, see. I guess it's not saying, it, it, it was a fortune when it say will be rising. <laughs> mm. Or are going to rise. Yeah, I mean, it's oh. telling you something. Oh. It's more like a news, like news. <laughs> uh-huh. Okay, so Matt, uh, hopefully yours okay. is better. <laughs> um, this week's fortune to guide you through the upcoming week is Face Facts with Dignity. Again, not really a fortune, but good advice anyway. Yeah. As usual, you know, please stay home. Please stay safe. Please stay healthy. We'll catch you next week. See you, everyone. Bye.